Oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to this tutorial. Yes. <laughs> we are going to be doing our Hawaiian sunrise project today. Uh -huh. We have Keenan here working in camera. Hello. And the whole theme of our box is around the world. I know. So we, we're we're going around the world. Around the see. world in 80 minutes. Traveling around. Um, and when I thought about this project and this box, I was thinking about um, not only is it around the world, but it's just natural kind of natural wonders from around the world mm. or natural settings from the, around the world. So then I was thinking about um, some of the most beautiful places I have been. And I lived in um, Hawaii for a couple of years. And one of my favorite things was to watch the sunrise. So we oh, are going yeah. to do a Hawaiian sunrise yes. for our tutorial today. I'm gonna put Great. Down. You don't need those? Uh, not right now. What if those were a camera <laughs> and you could use those for us? Maybe I'll put in a little... Sarah, that'd be really helpful. Can you get a binocular camera? Sure. And just wear that? Sure. For the next... Thank you. That's great. Does that look okay? That looks great. Okay, I can't see. We're getting in theme here. Okay, so we are going to be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we are going to wet our paper and then do a light purple wash about uh, three quarters of the way down. Our uh, second step mm -hmm. is to do a yellow, kind of darker orange bottom for the rest of our paper. Our third step is we are gonna put in our large, darker clouds up at the top. Our fourth step is put in our medium clouds and our fifth step is doing these kind of small skinny clouds. Okay? Okay. Um, there is no outline with this project, so we're just gonna freehand everything, but that's okay, I'll guide you through it. I am using four colors with this project. So our very first color is dandelion yellow. Our second color is magenta. Our third color is orchid. And our last color here is azure blue. I'm using four paintbrushes today. I have a round two, round six, round 12, and one inch wash. We are using all four, but just use what you have if you don't have everything. Um, and this is a fairly quick project, so Keenan. Yes. Keep an eye on the time for me, okay? Uh, you know that I get a little chatty. What do you mean? You want to slow you down or no, speed you up? No, I mean just be like, Sarah. I'm just going to start been snapping for 45 what? minutes. What are you even talking about? <laughs> but um, this is a fairly quick tutorial, and we are actually learning a new technique with this. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit, and then we're going to go straight into the project, okay? Like right now? Right now, what? You're going to do, you've been talking for a few seconds? <laughs> How, what's the level? <laughs> you give me a lot of power here, Sarah. Too much power, I've made a huge mistake. I regret this immediately. <laughs> I'll try not to laugh because it hurts. Oh, I'm sorry. Kenan's having some neck pain. It's okay, I'll live. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today is stretching your watercolor paper, which is not really something that I talk about because it's not something that I do. And just because I don't like it and I don't do it doesn't mean that I shouldn't share the information with you. So we're gonna talk about it and we're even gonna do it today. Wow. So stretching your paper is a way that you can prep your watercolor paper to avoid buckling. So when you wet the surface of your paper, when you're, it stretches it by adding water to it. And when you only do that on one side, that's why you get peaks and valleys. That's when your paper warps. And that's frustrating with watercolor because in the valleys, that's where paint can settle. And that's where you can get some hard lines and things like that. So there is a way that you can prep your paper to kind of avoid this, that. So then when you go to paint on it, it stays mostly flat. The traditional process of doing that is you get a piece of paper and you want to submerge it in water, the whole thing, for about 10 minutes. And then after it's been about 10 minutes, you pull it out and you tape it or staple it to a board or a surface and you let it dry completely and then you come back and you paint on it. I don't like to do that because that takes a lot of time and I'm busy. And I like watercolor for its ease. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. that's why I chose this medium. Water, paint, paper. That's all you need. Um, if I don't stretch for workouts, I'm not stretching my paper to paint. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, it 
Uh, so how do I say this? That is the more traditional way to approach watercolor painting. It can help with warping. Um, I have tried it myself personally, but I found it so cumbersome and I just wasn't patient enough. And I'm sure if you're a more organized person, you can like stretch all of the paper. And then that way, when you're ready to paint, you can just like pull it and go. Uh, I'm just not that way. You know, I'm a, I'm a grab and go type of gal. So um, I don't do it, but I thought about, I should show you how to do it. And what we're going to do is instead of wetting both sides and then letting it dry and come back to it, we're gonna paint directly on it while it is still wet. So I do not have any tape for this project, okay? Because we are going to be stretching our paper and then painting on it. So just so you guys know, like these are, I've done this project a few times here, all the examples. So it's gonna turn out different every single time, but these were not taped down, hmm. okay? So they dry fairly, like straight, fairly flat, I mean. Um, but I do want, before we get going, I want to just give you some uh, more information. Um, stretching paper is not necessary for heavyweight paper, like a 300 pound paper, 100% cotton, you do not have to stretch. You might get a little bit of warping if you paint directly on it, but not nearly as much. Now the paper that we use for Let's Make Art is a 140 pound paper, which is a lighter weight paper, which means that you experience warping and buckling as I'm sure you guys know. So if you guys wanna try stretching your paper to see if that helps, go for it. What I do just to minimize it, as you guys know, is I just tape the edges down. I mean, I still get the warping and the buckling, but it can still control it in a way that I don't think it really impedes my painting. Um, and so that way I can just go directly into it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share with you is that there are some papers that you can get that are on a block. That means that they're glued down on all of the sides. I'm pretty sure we sell blocks of watercolor paper on our website. And some people say that those are pre-stretched. I don't actually believe that because still, even when I paint on those blocks, I still get warping and buckling. It's just more like it's just taped down already as opposed to pre-stretched. So um, use that information as you will. And also sometimes I've stretched my paper and it actually isn't that much more flat than when I just tape it down. So maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I have not found the difference to be um, helpful enough to do all of that extra work personally, but that's just me. And also you're your own artist in person. And if you decide that that's for you, then like more power to you and I support you on your endeavor. Okay. And good luck. And good luck. Meanwhile, I'll be over here painting. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Bone roast. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay. So I have clean water. I have my paper. We're going to do a half sheet here. And I have a spray bottle. It just makes it easier for me to wet the surface. Um, and I got my paint colors. So we're gonna do our oath and then we are immediately going to get into it. So if you can raise your right hand. What do you mean by immediately? Because it seems in. like... I'm talking too much? <laughs> Boom roasted. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you the steps and the colors that we're gonna mix before we start painting. And that's because with this project and this wet on wet technique, we wanna work fairly quickly. We wanna be putting the clouds in while our paper is still very wet because then they'll diffuse out softly. We'll get those beautiful soft edges. So what we're going to do is we are going to wet the back side of our paper and the front side of our paper. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of orchid and blue together to get this really light purpley color. And I'm gonna do that three quarters of the way down. And then this bottom corner, as you can see, I kind of go to like this pink orange color and then a yellow kind of horizon line is what we're going for. Now, when it comes to drawing clouds, I'm gonna just go over the basic shape with you right now. So then when we go to paint, you can just drop it in. Let's say this is my paper. When you put cl our clouds in, our big clouds are gonna be starting from this side and they're gonna be slightly angled this way. Do you see how they swoop? Yes. So I'm gonna drop in color and it's gonna kind of do this. Okay, so those are our large clouds. And then our medium clouds, same thing. I'm putting them in at a 
angle like this and we can make these a little bit bigger and they're just gonna bleed and kind of do their own thing, okay? And then when we get to here, these are gonna be our thin lines and this is where we kind of straighten them out just a little bit more. So it kind of feels more angled up top and then as you get your way down, they straighten out. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, this color here for our dark clouds, we'll be mixing all of the colors together to get a dark purple, but we still want it to read purple. So mix orchid in there more than anything else. And then these ones are gonna get a little bit pinker as we work our way down, okay? Okay. So. Pinker. You wanna make sure that you are painting not on a surface that you care about, because as you can see, we're gonna be painting off the edge and the surface and the paint itself is going to um, get underneath our paper, like so. I actually think it's lovely though. <laughs> it is lovely. So I don't get mad at it, but it will show it's up like on It's like a natural there. vignette. Yeah, isn't it just nice? Yes. Um, so don't paint on like a really nice wood table or <laughs> that you don't want paint on. Okay, we ready? Ready. I'm gonna take my spray bottle. You can use just water, but a spray bottle is just a much, sorry, I'm gonna take this flower out, it keeps falling. A much easier way just to keep your paper wet faster. So I'm gonna start on the back and I'm just gonna, a lot of sprays. 12. <laughs> what, did you count? Yep. Okay. And then I'm gonna work it back and forth to even it out. It's better to do a little bit more water than not enough. So do the same thing on the front. Is that 12? 12, <laughs> nailed it. And then I'm using my paintbrush. And as you can see, it kind of suctions cups onto my surface. So it's flat now, okay? Nice and wet. Now I'm going to mix my orchid and a little bit of blue. And I'm gonna get this gorgeous light purple and I'm just gonna put that in. And we're gonna go about two thirds of the way. And we want this to be a fairly light value. Now, because it's so wet on here, I can see like the color is not staying as dark and that's okay. We want this to be light. Now I'm gonna introduce pink orange in here. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of magenta, a little bit of yellow. And I want this one to be a little bit darker value. So I'm gonna do a couple layers because I want it to almost feel like a layer of clouds that are like that dark orange color or pink mm. color, you know? Those are my favorite. Yeah, they're pretty. There we go. Maybe one more little pink layer. And again, I want to make decisions and work quickly. We want to put the clouds in while my paper is still wet. So I'm just like going for it. You can use your one inch wash. You can also switch to your round 12 at this point. And you can see because it's so wet, sometimes that yellow bleeds up the side. I don't get mad cool, about that. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and then I'm gonna take just strong yellow, go along this bottom here, almost like that sun is starting to peek through. Okay. And now I'm gonna start with step three. We're on step three already. We're putting in our dark clouds. So I'm going to grab this, mix all the colors together, and but I still want it to read purple. You really gotta be moving. Yeah, we're just going for it. I got my 12 and I'm just gonna put in those dark clouds. So sometimes I like to swoop and then kind of along the edges, I like to do like, just drop it in just to get like roundness, okay? And remember that it's kind of like angling in. And then the same thing on the other side. And you can see it's kind of just 
softly moving out. Ooh, I like that one. I do too. I'm gonna move. I wanna create like a little bit different shape with this. Cause remember clouds can be any shape. So like, don't stress too much about what shape it is. Somewhere there is a cloud that looks like that. You know what I mean? And then it just changed. So it can be anything. Yeah. And maybe like a little piece is coming off, you know? I think that uh, watercolor is uh, pretty great for pretty clouds. Pretty cool, right? Right? Isn't this fun? Like just dropping it in. And if you want to go a little bit deeper, like right in the center, deeper in color, you can. I mix a little bit more blue in there. So see how it's like a darker purple? Yeah. Or you can just leave it like this really nice soft color. And now we're going to go in and put in our medium clouds. So I'm going to use that same color, but add a little bit more purple or magenta to it. And I'm just going to swoop it in. And maybe um, this guy. And I'm just going to paint right over it. So it's still kind of angled in, but not nearly as angled as our top ones. And if you want to do some little flyaways. That looks cool already. And then for you guys that have an extra large brush, if you want your clouds, this is just a little trick that I do sometimes if I want them to seem really soft and wispy is after I put them in like this, I'll swoop them. Well, that had a little bit of color on that shoot. Let me see what this one does. This seems clean. So using a dry brush, I'll just swoop them out along the edges and it just kind of makes a softer wisp. Hmm. You can do the same thing here. But I actually kind of like, maybe I'll do it a little bit down here, but not too much. So you guys can decide where, where do I want some softness or where do I actually really like the shape? Because the clouds are different, right? They change. Right. Um, so this one you can see is starting to disappear a little bit more and I want to keep it stronger. So you can do another layer, another wash if you're just like, no, 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 don't disappear on me. I need you. Pretty. That is so pretty. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gosh, I love how this turns out. And what I love about this project is you could do this. This is like my fifth one and all of them look different from each other. And I love that. Now I'm going to switch to my six and I'm going to use mostly magenta at this point. And I'm going to start putting in my thinner lines. And these ones are still kind of angled, still kind of coming in using mostly just pink. If you want to add a little bit of orange for or yellow for warmth, you can. Just kind of dropping those in. So they slightly angle and swoop in. Okay. And then this is where you want it to maybe like give it a minute to dry because these smaller thin ones um, it's really easy for those to blend out and fuzz out depending on how wet your paper is. So um, I'm not going to put those in just yet. And I feel like I need just a little something here. I love, I love this project. So <laughs> I know, this is cool. <laughs> Okay, let's see, let's try the thin ones. So, okay, so those light pink ones, you see how they pretty much disappeared? Yes. Okay, I need to put those back in. Did they just disappear because they spread out? They... If, yeah, because everything is so wet, mm. all of this paint is just distributing in the wet areas, which is how we're able to get such a soft, beautiful edge. So it's not bad, it just means that you gotta pay attention to how your painting changes as it's as we keep adding stuff to it. And I'm not mad that it blends out because if anything, I feel like it um, adds to our orange background, it adds to like the purple, like, yeah. I think it's beautiful, so I don't get mad at it for doing that. 
So you guys don't get mad at it either, okay? You be nice. You be okay. nice to watercolor. <laughs> That's what this whole box is actually about, being kind to your yeah. paper and watercolor. Okay. Mm. Gosh, that's looking so good. I might, just because I can, I might do a darker edge here. I know that I did yellow. Do you like that or should I turn it more orange? I just don't know if I love that bright yellow on there. I get thrown off a little on the, because of the corner, the bottom right corner. Okay. Because it goes like hard corner instead of bleeding out, but Let's I look, like the yellow. What if we make it like a dark pink instead? Yeah, that would look good. Let's try it. And guess what, you guys? You're the artist. So if you're just like, no, I freaking dig the yellow. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> this That's is my your, color. <laughs> this is yours. Um, or you can also like think to, I mean, I know y'all got pictures of sunrises and sunsets on your phones. Everybody does. Keenan, oh, do yeah. you? I have, set, I have drone footage of sunsets yes. and sunrises. So now that we're learning this technique of that wet on wet, how can you incorporate this in pictures that you have and places that you have been? Sarah, that's a challenge. It is. And I'm pushing you guys, but it's fun. Ooh. It is fun. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Into that. That looks awesome. I'm going to do a little great. darker pink right here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 Pretty cool. Okay, now I'm going to take that same dark pink, and let's try our two. So for, like, the more detail, thinner clouds, I like to use smaller brushes. It's just easier to get thinner lines. And I'm going to use this kind of magenta color and then here I'm just gonna do thin lines like this and they're diffusing out a little bit but that's okay do another layer so we kind of want it to feel like all of these clouds are moving towards this one point where it kind of like flattens out a little bit, kind of mm. like draws our eye into this central space here. Yeah. Cool. And then I'm going to do, I'm feeling edgy. I'm going to see what it's like if I do a little bit of purple down here, cloud coming in. Okay. Now the purple on top of the yellow is going to read more desaturated because yellow and purple are across from each other on the color wheel. So when you mix them together, you get muddy colors. Um, but I still think orchid is kind of vibrant enough that you can still keep some of that purple color without it turning just mud, you know? Yes. I mean, look at it. Looks excellent. So just a little hint, because that pink of my kind of medium to small clouds that I put in here kind of still diffused out. So let's, if I want them to show up stronger, I'm going to add a little bit more purple to that mixture. One thing that I just noticed that I did that I didn't realize is I have like a hole right here. You see how I don't have really any clouds mm, yeah. happening? So that's fine, or if it's bothering you, like I just realized it was kind of bothering me, I'm just gonna add a little cloud there and then swoop out. I just wanna break up that space just a little mm. bit. You don't have to do a lot. Just the subtle hint of a cloud moving is all it needs. Okay, and then I'm gonna let this dry for a second um, before I do like the actual finishing details. Cause you can see there's still, there's a little bit darker value, but they're not staying as sharp as I would like them to. So you gotta just be patient, but yeah. I know it's the worst, isn't it? Yeah, what? And if you're getting some lines that you don't like, like when I added that orange and that yellow, if you wanna like blend those out a little bit, to get a smoother wash, you can. Your paper should still be damp, so you should be able to blend that line out fairly easily. Or if you like a good bloom, like I do sometimes, you can just leave it. 
Now, as you can see, because we have water kind of put up over here, it's coming back onto our paper and creating these edges. Again, I'm not mad about it. I'm, I'm really not. And if it really bothers you, but you love this technique, then this is where you would probably want to tape it and then work on it wet on wet. And you're like, Sarah, how can I use tape on a wet paper? Well, they make this special gum tape actually that is that gets tacky once it hits a wet surface. So when you touch it, it doesn't feel sticky at all. And what? then once you that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's specifically for watercolor painting. And so it just comes in this roll. It looks like craft paper. And then so while it's wet, you would kind of just wet the surface, the paper's already wet and then the board and you would just put it on cross and it would stick to it. And then once it dries, it's kind of easy to like take off. I'm pretty sure. I don't use it that much because I don't prep my paper. I have some in my drawer. Um, but if you don't, if you want a clean edge, but you still want to do the wet on wet, just do the same thing, but use that tape and you'll still get a nice clean edge. Okay. Cool. I'm going to cheat. Ah. I don't recommend this. I feel like this is actually eliminating all of the hard work we did of flattening our paper because it's not going to evenly dry oh. because I'm introducing heat. heat to different sections. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens. Risk it for the do patients. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> yeah, you can see it start to... Okay, I think that's enough though. I just wanted to do a little... I cannot get over this area on my painting, if I I'm know, being honest. Awesome. It is just beautiful. Okay, where's my magenta? It got lost a little bit. So grab some magenta. If you want to make these orange, you can. If you want to do just straight pink, you can. I'm going to do a little in between. And I know you're thinking, how do I know how many thin lines to do? I don't know. I just go till it feels right. And that's not helpful. <laughs> but, but what would be helpful is for you guys to know that whatever you put in is not going to be wrong. There is so many variations that you can have in clouds. So don't get too caught up in it, you know. Patience and acceptance are key for this Absolutely. project. Okay, and this is leaning a little bit to the right, and I want it to be more straight, so I got to uh, straighten that out. Sometimes just having to straighten things out, you do more. You have to add more just to get the kind of feeling right than if you originally planned, but that's okay. Mm. Just be careful because your brain is going to want to make patterns. Your brain is going to want to do the same length, evenly spaced across the whole thing. And nature is just a little bit more um, inconsistent than that. <laughs> So, uh, you know, just watch that. And there's our sky. Beautiful. I'm thrilled with how that turned out. Isn't that just... <laughs> it's mesmerizing. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. And I love this technique because it's quick and I love these soft edges. Mm -hmm. by doing that technique. That's what, it just feels like these clouds um, are, I don't know, just like swooping and light. They, it just makes them feel so light. And uh, I struggle with clouds, honestly. Clouds are pretty tricky. Um, but I think that this technique really lends itself to clouds. So I hope that you guys um, had fun with this and I hope that you do a lot and play with different colors. And like here, this one, 
I added more pink after to these clouds just to see how it would show up. And obviously I did a lot more like swooping on this one, but I think I really like how this that turned out. This one I was playing with what would it be like if we dropped really, really dark right in the middle. Mm. You know what I mean? This yeah. one I kind of did that there, but it does have a lighter, a little bit highlight right here, which I wish that I would have noticed that sooner so I could have add color to blend it out. At this point, I don't think I can blend it out. So that's just one where you got to uh, accept whatever happened. Hmm. But take a look. So many different ways to do it. So many different ways to do it. So many different ways to play. And um, like what would happen if you did the whole thing and you didn't do this big yellow chunk? You know what I mean? Like what would happen if it was a more blue background instead of like a light purple? So, and you did like dark blue clouds instead Ooh, of dark purple, you know, like yes. play, explore and recognize that the, the value is in that. It's the value is not the finish. The value is in the exploration and the curiosity because that's where you learn. And even if it comes out not how you wanted, that's okay because it's not about that. That's not the thing. The thing is, what did I experience and learn and take away while I was creating this? If it was just joy, that's enough. If it was you learn that these two colors do not go well together, <laughs> that's valuable that you can move forward with. So um, I hope with this new technique, you, you have a better understanding of why you would want to stretch your paper and what you need to do it and how to do it. Um, and then also how to paint skies. That's, that's what we did here. So um, we're done. The project is finished. Wow. Let it sit here and dry, but it should dry. I mean, these I just kind of left on my, my desk for a bit, and they dry fairly flat, as you can see, which is nice. Um, and, excuse me, if you're, <laughs> sorry. Oh, oh, bless you. Dry throat. Um, if you're on Facebook, you can join our group. This is going to be a super fun one to see because all of these are going to be so different. And I feel like it's so accident based that I'm just like, oh, what's going to happen? I don't know. So if you're on the Facebook group, you can um, join us. If you're not, it's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. It's a large group, but don't be intimidated. I mean, there's a large range of skill, but just because there are some people who have more experience on there, that doesn't mean that the work that you're making as a beginner or maybe as an intermediate is less valid and that you shouldn't share. You should always share. Um, so do that. If you're on Instagram, you can tag us. We have different hashtags. You can find those in the description. If you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. And I think that's it. That's it. Thanks guys. See you next time.